Well, hello from Alderman Farms. Uh, we're going to give you a high tunnel tour and not just the high tunnel, but the areas around the high tunnel that we've been working on. Um, one thing that we did, I guess, when we first did the high tunnel is we planted comfrey. And I had one comfrey plant from Old Alabama Gardener, and that comfrey plant has turned into, I think, over 10. And I have harvested some of it. I haven't harvested all of it. And I'm very pleased that you can you can hardly tell I harvested some from these first few, uh, I guess the first four, uh, to make some compost tea, some comfrey compost tea. And one thing that we did this year that I'm so excited about is that we built a grape or muscadine trellis. And this is it right here. So one day, hopefully this year, it will be covered with grapevines uh, or muscadine vines. So we did that and we moved it from our old garden area. And it really was a much easier moving it, putting it up than it was putting it up the first time. So. <laughs> Uh, we just, I just love it and it'll be, we're going to do a walking path that goes through it. Hopefully one day we'll have all this area covered with uh, stuff to eat. Uh, one thing we did this year to have stuff to eat is that we have some plum bushes right here. Uh, plum trees that we planted and they of course won't produce this year but hopefully in the next two, three, four years we'll get some fresh plums off of it. We also have a row of potatoes over here um, that we planted and they're coming up we haven't got a mulch good but we need to do that and I'm not sure why but they really come up good at the beginning uh, over half the row but then the other half hasn't come up so good um, I don't you probably can't see it on the video so good but there is some grass that's coming up around it so we really need to get those mulched where we don't have to be weeding that and everything and beyond the, the potatoes down there, we have a couple of apple trees that we planted this year also. The apple trees we ordered from Ison's Nursery. The plum trees we got at our local tree sale. And all of our bushes that we got at the tree sale are doing wonderful except one plum. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is with that plum. Um, and, and it started out great. Yeah, it's been doing great. We just noticed that the leaves are really withered. And so with something's going on, I need to ask a friend of mine... Uh, Rebecca about that because she may know. So we're going to show you around the outside of the high tunnel then we'll go inside the high tunnel. You're supposed to like look at the camera and say come on. Come on. <laughs> now I want to say this too. We've had to reclaim this area because last year we did nothing in it. Well we're in the process of reclaiming yeah. it. Yeah we're in the process of reclaiming it. So it's kind of a mess. So this is a row of weeds right here. <laughs> They're gonna... coming along nicely. <laughs> They're pretty. It's got some pretty flowers in there. Good for the bees. Yep. This is one of our blueberry bushes that we planted uh, about two years ago. Um, I got this blueberry bush at Walmart. The first two are from Walmart. Um, I, I noticed today I've got these weeds coming up through my little mulch right there. I've got to get. And this is green onions that were some that my papa had. Um, that my aunt saved them. And I'm going to go ahead and dig them and uh, dry them this year. And then I'll, I'll have tons of green onions by next year. I have a lot already. It's a pretty, pretty good bit. It goes all the way to the next blueberry bush. We're growing good, good crop of sticks. Yep. All this stuff is from last year that we just haven't gotten out of it. And it's all up in the, all up in the green onions. But I'm leaving it right until I dig the green onions. And then I'll, you know, reclaim this row. So, because if, if I were to pull up this stuff, I would pull up green onions. And I'm, le I'm letting them, uh, they're going to seed now. That, in fact, show this picture right here. This is uh, the bloom of the green onion. It's going to seed. And so once they go to seed like this, they will die back. And then you dig the uh, onion sets. And if you see, they're, they're, 
I guess they're called multiplying onions. Let me go right around the here. Um, they're oh, sorry. They're multiplying onions. And like, for instance, right here. Hang on. Sorry if the microphone's making racket. I'm trying to move it. Right here, I planted just one bulb, and you see how it's multiplied, and it's going to be multiple bulbs. So that's, that's, I guess these are truly multiplying onions. I call them green onions. But anyway, but this will all start dying back, and then I'll dig these up and dry them, and then I'll replant them again when it starts getting towards the fall. May even have some to sell, actually, because I'm going to have a lot of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and step over here. This row here that you can see that we've gotten the hay or the straw down on, this is my squash row. Uh, most of this row is squash, and down towards the end of it, I've got um, watermelon and cantaloupe planted. Also, um, this squash I did start from seed because, you know, sometimes some don't come up and you have a skip or whatever, and I really like planting my squash. Uh, from seed, well, of course I planted seed, but seed in my little, uh, my little seed cells. And then I planted them out here, I guess about a week ago. I just planted the watermelon, I believe, yesterday evening. I like to plant in the late evening where the sun's not so hot, because even though it's pretty chilly today, we probably got up to 60 or 70 degrees, and a lot of times it's hard on the plants when you've just first planted out. On this row, um, where you see the trellis, we've got it weed eated the far row over there. Um, I'm going to plant some tomato plants out there. And then the row between the squash and the tomatoes, we have to reclaim it. And I'm sure I can think of something to plant there once Tommy uh, gets it weed eated for me. But we kind of been having a little bit of weed eater problem. So, but anyway, um, can, do you think, will the internet last for us to go all the way back to the back? Let's try it. We're going to try. Uh, I if guess we start buffering, we'll run back up here toward the front. Yeah. So let's go back here. Um, towards the back. This was grown up back here in the corner. You have to stay in front of the microphone. <laughs> Sorry, dude. baby. This was grown up back here. We're out of practice on high tunnel updates. Sorry. Uh, well, just go ahead and show this blueberry. This is the only blueberry bush here at the high tunnel. We have four of them, but this one actually is full of berries. So it's the only one at the yeah. high tunnel with berries on it. I don't, I don't understand why this one has berries and the rest of them don't, but it does, and it's it's full of berries. So, and we didn't get a hard frost or anything. It's not like a frost got them. So I'm really not sure, you know, what the difference is. But we're glad this one has berries anyway. And next to it, right here, is the uh, um, garlic. Garlic. Thank you that I had planted year before last, and um, it came back. I never did dig it last year, and so it came back, and so I think I'm gonna have some nice sized garlic bulbs this year. And then be beyond that, I forgot I had planted some bulbs, some flower bulbs, uh, and I can't remember the name of them, but Grandma Rose gave them to me at, uh, at the uh, Deep South. Daffodils? Yes, I think they're daffodils. Uh, not this past year because we didn't get to do it, but the year before, last, you know, the, a year ago, she gave them to me. And so they have come up so good, but I forgot about them. And I saw it growing out there and I sent her a picture of them. And she told me, she says, yeah, yeah, that's daffodils. So I'm excited to see. She said they're the latest blooming ones. So I'm excited to see how they're going to look. But of course, they have a crop of grass all around them. So I hope they'll still make. But come on, let's come on to the uh, back over here. So far, so good. Good. Can they see? Can they see? He's growing up in here. Can you give me a minute. This is them right here, and it's it's a quite a long row of them. So there was it was bulbs that I planted, and I just forgot. So next year I'm going to do a better job of having this cleared out, hopefully. And uh, for them to come up. The bees are going to love that. Yes. And then this is the last blueberry bush down here. Right there. And it has no berries on it. But, and I didn't fertilize them this year. So that could be a difference too, of the not fertilizing them. And then there's an apple tree here that we got from Ison's Nursery too. Um, are you going to stay right there? I'll come a little bit. 
It looks like we're still on, so. Well, I just want to, I want to stay in by this at least where they can see how big this patch is. This is some, was grown up last year, and I told Tommy, I said, don't cut this down because I think it's blackberries, and y'all, I wish we'd have taken a picture of it before the, the flower were gone and the berries started making because it's growing up in there not everything you see in this picture of course is blackberries but there is a ton of yeah. blackberries in there yeah like this is not blackberries right here but all this it's covered with blackberries thanks bj bj stacy said we're still we're still got good connection oh good good okay and right here is some blackberry bushes some thornless blackberry bushes that i bought from ison's nursery also and um Tommy made me this box to go around it, and we never have mulch in it or anything well, like that. Well, I did that really to protect them because yeah, they I were little. They were just sticks. They, they were, were just, just sticks. sticks. And I was coming in and out of the high tunnel on the tractor and stuff, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna run over them suckers. So I had the boards laying around, so it wasn't. Well, yeah, we fit, we were tripping over them. So. Yeah, it was really just to protect them, you know. But I don't know. We may end up. We'll certainly put some mulch in there, but it's too late to put enough yeah i don't there, know so. if i can raise the level up on the blackberries or not i'm not sure oh i was going to show you too these are the little watermelon and cantaloupe that i planted last night right here and i haven't got my hay around them yet or my straw but i'm going to do that probably in the morning i'll get that done um just to keep the grass down i'm hoping to keep the grass down out of them and my my plan is to keep hauling in leaves and pine straw and stuff like that and fill up my my row middles where we walk and everything because I know they're going to trail everywhere so I want to get that where you know to keep them keep the grass out of it and everything I guess we'll go in the back of the high tunnel let's go in the back of the high tunnel guys we see your questions and comments if you'll allow us to complete the tour and then we'll come back and address your questions and this stuff. this still is still looks pretty pretty you know a lot of light okay. on the camera but we can always turn on the high tunnel lights if yeah. we need to this is the new addition to the high tunnel is that we we put some boxes in here and the level of the high tunnel we boo-booed when we made it we scraped the ground because it had so many weeds and everything well number one it was wrong because we scraped away the topsoil that really hasn't affected us though because we fertilized really good so the so the stuff is growing good in the high tunnel but we lowered the level of the high tunnel so we're having water seeping in the high tunnel from the outside um Looks so like tootsie seeping in the high tunnel yeah. from the outside too but um anyway so when we had the patio done over at the house you know we had the we got a concrete slab so they scraped the ground and everything so tommy has brought the dirt and put it back here i've tilled it up and then we raked it and we put the boxes in and so back here i'm planning on planting lettuce and um pepper plants and all and um my deal and so i have the boxes they're not filled to the top yet um which over in the garden area that we used to use my boxes still were not completely full and i did fine but i am we have decided um you know come in a little closer um we have decided to go ahead and get some bags of potting soil bags or truckload bags and uh mix with this the, the soil's not that bad in here but it's kind of lumpy and i think i want to get some 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 garden soil is what it's called organic garden soil that i can get from our local place and we're gonna uh just kind of mix it in the top little bit of it just to make a little better soil we could do our barnyard manure and that's what we typically do but there is a lot of weed seeds in there and I, and I have been using it in my planting holes, but I really hate for that to be all along on the, uh, on the top because the weed seeds are going to really, really grow up. He's going to go get the lights now. And if you haven't seen it, we bought some, uh, he bought some LED lights and they really are amazing. Those are a little, uh, they're a little, I can't reach those. He can tippy toe and reach them. But um, we're, we actually have some extension cords. We're going to spread them out a little bit. You can plug them into each other, and they are so cool. But um, they really, really light up, which, of course, you're seeing. But we're going to spread them out a little bit. We talked about getting some more, but I think if we put an extension cord between each one and spread them out, I think it's going to give plenty enough light in here. 
And um, I don't know how big of a view the, the camera is. Yeah, you can see all of it. But um, I've been working. You can see the grass along the sides, the side walls there. It's really bad. And the grass really had gotten bad. It kind of had taken over. Tommy's done some weed eating for us. And um, I've, I've, I worked on these last two rows over here today on my hands and knees pulling grass um, out of it and I have some pictures I never did do anything with them but I did take some pictures but um so last year I filled up the high tunnel with tomatoes that was the main thing I had in here was tomatoes I had uh, six rows of tomatoes which would have been 300 plants I think I think I have 25 plants per row Isn't that right that would be 150 plants I think that's right anyway one, two, three, four, five, six. No, 150 tomatoes. And so I have 100 tomatoes in here now. I've left me two rows to do other things in. And one thing I've done, come on, let's see. Here's Blue. Look at I grew, I grew snap beans in the fall last year, but I'm growing snap beans they all gone. The lights are so bright, it's glare. Oh. I grew snap beans uh, for the uh, farmer's market and for us for our springtime summer garden. So uh, they did a absolutely amazing in the fall, and they're doing really good now. Um, they're just before flowering, so we'll be picking green beans soon. Um, so this was, I did a whole row of green beans. I double planted it just like I did out in the other garden. Uh, so it's like... 100 feet of green beans rather than just 50. My rows are 50 feet long in here, but it planted on two sides, so it's like 100 feet. So I'm very, very pleased at how they're looking. They're doing good. Um, right here, I have some okra. This is not for the market. This is for us. This is some okra. And I actually was shy. I don't have 100 tomato plants in here, but I forgot about it. I was shy a few tomato plants. Yeah. And so... 96 or 94. Mm, yeah. Maybe, maybe even less. I can't remember. I think we, we were short either six or four. But anyway, on the rest of that tomato row, I put okra over there too. So, um. Hey, we lost our pepper plant? Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, the one that had overwintered. Yeah. We did lose it because we got it got really, really cold early before oh, okay. we closed the tunnel. All right, and then down here, um. Well, of course, you can see the tomatoes as we're walking. They're really doing amazing. They are doing so good. Uh, I have tomatoes on them, little little green tomatoes, and um, it's they're full of blooms. And so I've watered them today, um, and I'm watering them just about every day, just for like 15 minutes. But I need to go ahead and uh, add some fertilizer to them too. Yeah, so one of the things we've talked about this before, but. One of the most amazing things about growing in a high tunnel is how clean and beautiful the plants are. Because yeah. you don't have the rain spattering down on the dirt and splashing back up on the leaves. Uh, especially the low leaves, which Patty's going to tell oh, you a yeah. little something about the yeah. low leaves, I guess, right now. Yeah, that's right. I want to tell you about that. Um, one thing that I have, uh, you know, just doing some reading and stuff like that... Um, it, the branches, when they're close to the ground and everything, they can get more disease because of the dirt and everything. And these branches, these are uh, big beef tomatoes. These branches are huge. My, I, and I just went through and I cut the branches. And what you do is you cut the branches. You know, there's just different schools of thought on it. But one person talked about you cut the branches that are below your your first fruit, you know. And so that's what I've done. I've left... Uh, I've cut the branches up to my first fruit like that. And it's just so much easier to clean out and get the grass out. It's just, it was just, it's on just. on that one, you've got some new growth coming. What's your? The one you just put down at the very bottom. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and, and they keep, and that's another thing I've done too. I didn't do last year. I have been diligent of getting my sucker, cutting my suckers. Um, but I have let some get away from me like this plant right here. See, one of these were a sucker, and I didn't get it cut, and it's grown up, so it's like two plants now, and it's, it comes up from right here. And it's actually got, it's the one that's got a tomato on it. Yeah, it's got a tomato on it, and it's got plenty of blooms, 
but it's just more of a jungle of tomato than than just a single stalk like this so i'm trying to keep them to a single stalk but some of them <laughs> are a double stalk because i missed them so um, but this right here is the cucumbers and this is monica cucumbers i get them from baker seed baker creek uh seed company and i actually saved these seeds from my cucumber last year and what's so neat about these cucumbers they don't need bees for the cross pollination they uh are natural uh, self-pollinate self that's the word so that's why they're great for the high tunnel because you know you do have to be careful in the high tunnel what you put in here because we don't have a lot of bee activity and i was thinking about that I, okra i really don't remember about okra and i sure have planted it in the high tunnel so I hopefully we'll make okra. <laughs> yeah, if we not, might have to have some okra shaking parties or something. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so it's it's coming along nicely. We've tied this little string right here to try and help them to stay standing up because they were wanting to fall over. They haven't put out their little runners yet where they attach onto the trellis. So let me say a word about uh, pollination in the high tunnel. Okay. Um, because y'all know if you've been watching. Come over here, Patty, and let me see. Tell me when I'm in front of the camera. Okay. Patty's going to be the producer for a moment. I'll be the camera person. Huh? All right. Am I there? You're there, baby. Uh, so, even you know, we got a crop of honeybees again, and uh, you know, if you, I can't hardly think about anything else. But honeybees will come in a high tunnel, but they don't spend a lot of time in here because for some reason they have a hard time getting out. But bumblebees and other native bee species, um, this is not a honeybee update, but honeybees are not native to North America. They were introduced from Europe uh, way back. I mean, I think in the 1600s or something. But North America has a lot of native bees that are solitary. They don't live in hives or colonies like honeybees do. And Patty, that reminds me, we got to get on building some, some native bee yeah, houses. Because native bees are good for pollinating bumblebees are good for pollinating and we have a ton of bumblebees around here and uh bumblebees are excellent at pollinating tomatoes because they have a unique the poly, tomato blooms uh, hold their pollen really tightly and bumblebees you need to look this up on youtube bumble how bumblebees pollinate tomatoes bumblebees will grab a hold of the flower and they somehow, I hope I'm saying this right, they somehow disengage their wings from their flight muscles and then engage their flight muscles. And so it causes them to sort of violently shake without taking flight because they disengage their wings and shake the tomato, uh, the, the tomato blooms to cause the pollen to come free. Uh, so, and apparently bumblebees don't have as difficult time getting out. Every now and then I will see one. Yeah, you even know, here, they're loud hitting the ceiling. They're loud hitting the ceiling, but we got to get us, uh, we got to get, and there, there was an article I found, I never went back to it, I got to find it again, mm -hmm. but an article about ways to attract uh, bumblebees into your high tunnel. Oh, okay. So, well, but, but we got to make some native bee houses too. But I have a way to pollinate the tomatoes. It's what? kind of like the bumblebees. For me? Watch. Just Watch. go. Blah, 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 yeah, blah. yeah, when you do that, come over here. This is how you... Wait, let me make sure you're looking. You are. I mean, okay. make sure you're on the camera. This is how you can... This is how you can pollinate tomatoes in the high tunnel. Yeah. Shake them like that. Seriously. Oh, wait, um, wait a minute. Don't wait. shake my tomatoes wait like you just did. <laughs> I had a request from Kim to show us <laughs> that again, again one more time. <laughs> Anyway, so my goal, I was planning my, uh, these cucumbers are for the market. Uh, I will be selling some green beans at the market and cucumbers. And so I was going to plant this whole row full of cucumbers. With everything that's going on right now, we're not 100% that we're going to have a normal market. Uh, we will have some kind of market. But um, my lettuce, uh, we're going to come down here, Tommy. And uh, I'm going to show you the lettuce. It is uh, about to go to seed, but it has grown huge. Huge. Before you leave the cucumbers, was that a tip from the Pratt's? What? The Monica cucumbers? Yeah, that's who told us about the Monica yeah, cucumbers. Yeah, Pratt Family Homestead. Yep, yep they did. Um, but anyway, okay. Hey, Josh, baby, you want me to hold you? Tootsie is. Okay. She's oh. feeling frisky in the cold. 
She loves her mama. Anyway, I don't know how good you're going to get to see the lettuce. It, it looks okay on the, on the camera. The well, I don't know if they're going to be able to tell, but this lettuce all should be this tall or taller. It's laid down now. Oh, it should it's be way a, taller. Look at look at the end. Yeah, down see there. the end down here is all the way up to here. That's how tall it should be. <laughs> but we've had it's been real windy here with the storm that came through and everything. Um, which of course we closed the high tunnel, but it's still even today it was real windy today during the day. Yeah, it's been blustery. And so I mean, and that's one thing that will help the uh, tomatoes cross pollinate too is the wind blowing through. Yeah. Um, you don't have to have bees and bumblebees to, and I'm sure that helps it, it makes yeah, it yeah. better yeah but, it uh, makes them it makes the uh it makes the fruit bigger and more plentiful yeah and i have noticed that some of my tomatoes um you know it's i don't have a big cluster of tomatoes it's just like two one or two and that may be because of the bees we're going to go over here on this side um because i have some little things planted well i guess i can show this side first over here um I, I've all, I like to have my little rows to the side where I kind of play with stuff. And, um, Her experimental rows. Yeah. I planted cilantro right here, and it is doing amazing. Now that's pretty dark, but we can see it. Yeah. I think. That's, that's really good. If you want to walk down this row right here, Tommy, um, and you can show, I can show them kind of my strawberry plant. All this here is, this is strawberry plants right here. Um, I found them, I thought I had lost most of them because I didn't deal with them last year, but I found quite a few. Plus I have a, a green stalk uh, planter over there at the house that I've got filled up with 30 strawberry plants. And I think I have near about uh, 15 to 20 over here. So I am plant, I planted them in this row and if you can kind of see that's a, a volunteer kale that was from last year but um you know I, you should really think about doing a video on that green stalk planter i have the video i just haven't edited it huh somebody won't help me edit it <sighs> it's your job but anyway so uh, i'm trying to figure out different stuff that i can grow in the side row because it is more moist and so strawberries were one of the things that i looked up and asparagus but i don't have asparagus yet i want to get some asparagus we need to get some asparagus yeah I know this is going to be dark too, but this is some sage right here. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to see that. Let's, let me look. Let me try. This is sage that I uh, had on the side row, and I went ahead and moved it over here for the winter time, and it has done really good. In fact, I need to cut it back and go ahead and dehydrate some of it. Oops. Ooh, just if you touch it, it smells so good. Um, and uh, let's see. And I keep, I have more of my Papa's green onions right here. Um, and they haven't really gone to seed bad like the ones out there. I planted these later. So I've been harvesting some of these. I got a bunch in the kitchen and I really need to dehydrate some. And then right here, I tried to do carrots again because I need somebody to go get me some sand and uh, make me a box that's just for carrots. But I can't to seem and to... Wanda to bring us some sand. Yeah, I can't seem to get somebody to bring me some sand. Oh. But anyway, so my, my carrots never do come up very good. Um, but I have a few that's up. And then down here, Tommy's favorite vegetable. Night, Mimsy. Beets. Yeah. This is, this is the second time I've planted beets on the edge right here, and they've done well. Because, of course, beets like it cooler, and I guess and that it's pretty damp. So uh, they're, doing, they're doing good. And then this is a Brussels sprout that uh, I thought was dead. It was in the seed pack, and I went ahead and moved it to here. Oh, another thing I want to show is how I'm doing double. You need to show them this tomatoes. these tomatoes. Look right here. All right, let me try. Hang on. This one's got three on it right here. Hang on. It's Look doing there. good. Yeah. It's April 20th, y'all. We are in zone... 8B? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and it, um, you know, with being able to plant in the high tunnel, I planted at the beginning of March. Normally, 
when you're planting outside here. This year, people could have planted out earlier because, but you never know because we had you such we had such a warm an early spring. But we you never know if that's going to happen. But typically, we plant out on uh, in April. So just little plants, not you know ones with like this. But look, I'm, you can shoot from this way. I want to show you. Um, I've, do, I've double cropped again like I've done last year and it's worked out very well. You see, I, when I planted my kale, this is kale right here. When I planted my kale, I planted it on the outside of my row. I, this is two kale right here and I planted it on the outside of my hoses. And I did that on per, uh, for a reason because then I come in and plant my tomato plant in the middle. and. What I do is I just keep my kale picked back really, really sharp. You know, it's time to pick it right now. And then that way, my tomato plants are not shaded out. And so it's worked so I can continue to have a kale harvest even though I have my tomato plants growing. And I've done the same thing with my, uh, uh, those things, um, Brussels sprouts. Yeah, those things. These Brussels sprouts. And you see, they kind of even leaned over to the side, but... I won't do this again with Brussels sprouts because you look if you look and see how small even this one right here and this in here they're so much smaller than even this one right next to it and I think it's because they've been shaded too much um, this is broccoli here and it's still it's still making little broccoli heads but I won't do this with broccoli either because it's much a much thicker plant so um but it works well with kale. This see this more kale down here, and the tomato plants have done fine. So, anyway, I, I, I'm glad to get to do that because I, I would hate to have to pull up the kale to plant the tomatoes. So, but I'll just have to plant my broccoli and my Brussels sprouts somewhere else. So Brussels sprouts take forever. They just take forever, and the bugs are starting to eat them up really bad. So, all right, so. And you, what, okay. from here, why don't you show, just film. I still have lots of more plants. I'm going to plant some tomatoes out. And then I have plants that's going to go back there in the boxes. Kind of hard to see them, but yeah. there's a table full of seedlings. What you got over there? Well, I just was saying my tomato plants. And um, I have a couple of little melons that I'm going to plant inside here, too. To, um where I can control the water. I had some, uh, it's called an American French melon or something like that. It's supposed to taste like caramel. Yeah, and it, I mean, we had one, We first one tasted really good, but then it started raining, and then the other ones just had no taste. Just they smelled like good, they I smelled mean, just good, nothing. Yeah. But, um, so I'm gonna put them in one of the boxes back here and on a trellis, and so hopefully, with us being able to control the water, we'll have some tasty melon, so. Anyway, so we got questions? We do. Let's come over here. Getting the light. Yeah. So come over here behind the camera with me. Okay. And if I can get this tripod set up right. Stay with us, guys. We're not leaving. Turn the microphone around. Did turn, you turn it back on? I didn't turn it off. I turned it, I turned it down from regular instead of having uh gaining 20 decibels boosting the thing so boy there's a white out in here <laughs> that's, just just like, your, that's just your beard Dave. just my beard all right so let's see uh-oh uh yeah a lot so let me scroll back up here because there were some questions hey uh zincent shop uh diana justice acres uh oh the max are on bj yeah, thanks for letting us know hey robin y'all go see the max yeah go see the max happy homestead if you're tired of us already well when we get done yeah when we get done tell them we sent you too hey country homestead preacher yeah if you go to the max happy homestead tell them alderman farm sent you yes um uh, and say something about uh say something about why Ask Kobe why he makes his bees so mean and ornery. <laughs> he'll, he'll get a kick out of that. Okay, I saw Country Preacher. Dang, I can't get him to come back. Uh, Robin, let's see. Hey, Smith Family Ranch. Uh, 
let's see here. Darlene Thompson, hi from Oregon. Sun and going to be in the 70s oh, the next few days. Oh, nice. Ooh, Cameron's going to be loving that up yes, there. He's he will. been he's been fishing and uh, showing us fishing pictures and all that. I'm ready to go fishing myself. Yeah, Mimsy's garden. Uh, let's see here. Glad to, glad to see you, Kim. Hope you're happy with the bee dance. Hey, hey, Homestead Dad. Homestead Ninja Dad. Yeah. Minzy's Garden, and she's already left, but she may come back to watch the uh, replay. Wanted to know, did Isons ship them, or did you go to Georgia to get them? And the answer is yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, the, the original uh, um, apple trees, we, uh, we stopped by there on the way home from... Homesteaders of America conference mm -hmm. uh, a year before last, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. And then this year we had them shipping some. Yep. So. Uh, hey, the life of Chris and Tara. Uh, let's see here. Oh, glad you came in, Dad. I know you probably already popped in, popped out, uh, but it was good to see you. Thank you all for the nice comments. Yeah. I hey, Linda. That. Thank you. We love the lights in oh, here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, BJ, Stacy says that they uh, replanted uh, the suckers and harvested them last year. Get out. Yes, and that's what I've been working on, too. See, Tommy, I don't even know that. I didn't even know that. You keep scrolling, and I'll go get them. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Linda. Everything does look in here. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's got tomatoes, Tim. You ain't paying attention? He's got a hundred of them somewhere about Red Duchess Farm. Hey. Hey, Mark, how are you? I assume it's Mark. Might uh, be Jamie. Might be Jamie. <laughs> Jacques Bourne wants to know uh, when's the 24 hour honeybee live stream oh, going to be gosh. at the. You know good and well. It's, it's, our, it's going on. I you mean, it's you know good and well. I've already been thinking about it and how to make that happen. I don't have good access out there. Uh, let's see. Okay, Patty, I'm gonna hold my finger right here, and you show what you were talking about. This is my to, the, my. Um, no kidding, the suckers. suckers. Wow. Yeah. And but look, I have one. Look at it, hanging down. It's not making it, but that's okay because I have all these, and I don't really know what I'm gonna do with them. But I hate it. You just throw, keep throwing them on the ground. You can send them let's to see. Tim Beverly. See, that looks bad. I don't know. It just rotted on there but um i actually had just stuck some in the ground uh by where i where i knew a water uh, thing was on the drip and it actually i accidentally pulled it up today and had roots on it did so it I was really like, yes it's working wow, so they root so, easily yeah and these are i mean these have been in the in here for a week or two so i guarantee anyway. you you're wrong about that mark or, or jamie says i have beets you would like my grandmother's pickled beets no thank you i don't have any desire to eat pickled dirt because that's what they taste like. I want dirt. The recipe. But Patty wants a recipe. So you need to send Patty the recipe, Mark or Jamie, whoever that is. Who oh, they had it was 28 degrees there last night. Oh man. Around freezing tonight. Hey Jen. Hey, Jen. JM at the Nut House. Uh let's see. Yeah, I've, I've been seeing y'all busy. But you can tell we wear bifocals. We're not trying yeah, to shale up our nose. We're trying yeah. to see. We're not it's being good. uppity. It's We're trying good. to read. <laughs> uh, okay, Donna, hang on. Right. How's that? Is that blowing you out? Donna said, can you turn the volume up? It was fine until you ended the tunnel tour. Oh. I was trying not to blow you out. I, I wonder if that's better. Uh, she says is. she loved seeing the plants. Oh, good. Well, hi. Uh, I, I, how about if I not try to pronounce your name, uh, farmer from Pakistan, <laughs> Azamat Dart? He can't. I couldn't. He can't I help couldn't help it. I had to try. <laughs> uh, thanks well, for jumping in, and thank you very much for your kindness. Um, I'll have to check out your channel and see. Uh, I'd be curious to know about your growing and your seasons and whatnot in in Pakistan. Uh, thanks, White Picket Fence. We're pleased with it. I think it's probably wouldn't you wouldn't you agree that the high tunnel is the best thing we ever did as far as? Oh, I'm very pleased with it. Oh, Donna Norris said they're supposed to get three to six inches of snow. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Tara from Living on Dime had that much snow. 
I think Easter Sunday. Yeah, something like that. Oh my gosh. Look, it was crazy. 80 where Jen is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Donna said the, the sound is much better. Oh, good, okay. good. Oh, sorry, White Picket Fence what? had the speaker up to their ear. Oh. <laughs> Hello, is this thing on? <laughs> Testing one, two. All right, any more questions or comments? If not, uh, we're going to duck on out of here because it's, uh, oh, well, let me show right it's quick. slap dark, but not in, in case, here. In case somebody don't know what the sucker is and about the, about planting them, I just saw one right here. Now, I've already went over this road today, but every time I look again, I find more suckers. So now, wait. So now i got to turn the camera around, mm -hmm. turn yeah. the microphone around. Where's the sucker at? Right there. Oh, no. I'm going to do it just like this. Uh -huh. Ready? Okay. Wait. You watch the camera so you'll know when it's time. So, like, with the suckers on tomato plants, if you Am don't I know looking? what they are, uh, yeah, um, usually they grow up, like, between, like, right here where a branch comes out. And you see right here, this is a sucker. It's growing in, in, in the fork right there. And if I let this keep growing, it'll be like two tops. It, this, it'll catch up with this top, and, it'll, and I'll have two growing up. There's nothing wrong with having that, but because I don't want a tomato jungle... Uh, and it's just harder to deal with with me having to deal with so many plants. I just break it off and Here it is right here. You take this and you can put it in some some uh, Loose soil pot and soil and keep it well watered and this will root and this will become a tomato plant and you can plant it out So anyway, yeah. it's you'll, just really cool. You'll hear people say and swear by it. You'll hear old farmers swear by it that 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 if you that taking those suckers out increases your tomato harvest and and makes bigger tomatoes. Makes too. bigger tomatoes. And I get it. I understand what they're saying. You know that the more uh, energy going into making tomato leaves and tomato stalk is taking away from making tomato fruit. Mm -hmm. But you know, is that is that actual? Science, I don't know, because other farmers will say, no, leave them there because it'll, they can produce tomatoes. And, mm -hmm. you know, so who knows? Patty yeah. does it for management purposes. Just for management. If, if, it, if it wasn't for, I would probably pinch some suckers. But um, if it wasn't for me trying to do so many and sell them at the market, if it was just for our personal use, I wouldn't be so diligent. But I'm picking suckers twice a week. Yeah. Off of here. I mean, and I, it's hard to keep up with them. Just keep, because the, the plants are so I close together on. that at maturity, it's just a big tangled mess. Yeah. Last year I had to come in with scissors and like, because you actually, you couldn't dare even begin to walk through these tomatoes or anything. And uh, they were just everywhere. So it was my first year doing it. So I'm trying to be a little more diligent and stay up on things and take it's care a, of things. It's an ongoing experiment every year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's true for any gardener and, you know, uh, old people, not like us who've been gardening for a long, long time. They, I think they still, you know, they experiment from time to time. Well, sure. That's how you learn different stuff. That's how you There's learn a few different more stuff. Comments a few more up. comments. Let's see if I can find them. Uh, got to get rid of that sucker. Okay. Yep. Country Homestead Preacher said they grew tomatoes. Last year from their suckers. Jen said, waste not, want not. Give the extras yeah. away. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, probably that's what I'm right. going to end up doing because I don't know that we're going to get around to uh, putting them all uh, in the ground and everything. Well, Country Homestead Preacher wants to know the cost difference between a high tunnel and a greenhouse. And that's really a hard question to answer because yeah. they're two different critters. Well, um, I would imagine the cost is going to be similar because with the high tunnel. Assuming it's, it's, assuming the size is similar. No. And thing. No. 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 A, going having a high tunnel this size which is a 30 by 75 um and a what a normal size greenhouse like you know at the most 25 foot long by 15 foot wide or something like that just a normal size greenhouse i would imagine the cost is similar because and the high tunnel would be bigger but with your greenhouse, you're usually heating and cooling it. Right, right. You know, and then you're going to have, I don't have the the vents that automatically open when it gets a certain degree temperature and all that kind of stuff. There's more, uh, maybe infrastructure, in, yeah. infrastructure that goes into a greenhouse and goes into a high tunnel. Which, of course, you could build a greenhouse that didn't have all the fancy stuff. Sure. But um, typically they do. So I would say, you know, I would, I would think 
you know, a, an average size greenhouse would cost about the same as a high tunnel. Yeah, I, I guess that's right. And, uh, and, and a lot of that would depend on the materials you build it out of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you if you build it out of permanent material, then the then it could actually even cost more. You know, I, see I don't another know. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> I keep seeing suckers. All right, guys. Well, we're going to sign off here, and don't forget to go run over to the Max. Um, to the Max Happy Homestead. Yep. Um, let's see. Yeah, made the heart, Kim. That's right. Pull them suckers. Make it easier, especially when you square Thanks, box Linda. gardening. Linda says yeah. she's always learning from you. Yep. So. Oh yeah, that that must have been Mark because he just sent us a message. If you need more info, let me know. So, but anyway, uh, thank y'all so much for joining us, and hopefully it won't be so long before we do another high tunnel tour. I have taken some different video footage, but I just hadn't got it out there because I have a little app on my phone to make videos, and now somebody says I have to make videos too. Oh, she's learned how to do it. So now. Don't y'all think she needs to do it? Thumbs up the video if you think Patty needs to edit her videos and get them up there. Like that green stalk planter and the other 8 or 12. I know. I'll All right. try. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy what you see, give us a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already. And uh, we'll see you next time. Good night. Good night.